Welcome to our second podcast of this unit. We're at page 8. So we're going to look at a different type of diagram and this is what we looked at in the gizmo. This is called a heating curve. Now I'm telling you this is the heating curve of water but we can have other heating curves. So the first diagram we looked at was a phase diagram and this more this looked at pressure and temperature. Heating curve is just looking at one specific substance and just looking out at the temperature and when you add the energy it changes. So you have at the bottom there, one, two, three, four, five, you can write down notes what's happening at each phase. Okay, so let's first kind of talk about what's happening at the each phase and you come back. So in the beginning, look at what you have. Solid only. So this is when you have, so we had a beaker of ice and we have put it Bigger vice, put it on the hot plate, added heat. Look at what the temperature is doing. Increase, increase, increase until right here. Look at what happens. Let me quit hitting that. Then it's going to start to melt. So look at what's happening here. Solid to liquid. So this means it's melting. Again, right now we're assuming we're looking at this way. Okay, so this way is melting. Then at this point, all the solid is gone. And now it's just a liquid, and the liquid only is heating up. So you only have one phase here, liquid only. And then right at this point, it's going to start boiling. So look at what you're having, liquid to a gas, vaporization. Then at this point, all the liquid molecules have been changed, and now it's a gas. Okay, if you look at the picture on the front of your packet, Look at, it's a heating curve, and look at how the molecules, so remember, all we're doing is adding the energy and changing, getting those molecules to be moving further and further apart. So other things you need to know about this curve is not only just where the solid, solid liquid, where the phase changes happens, you need to know about the energy. So when you see a change of state, that's a change in potential energy, and a change of state happens at the flat parts, so at the flat lines, however you want to write it, no slope, flat lines, or flat line, excuse me, or no change in temperature. And that's kind of, remember, we don't take it off the heating pad here, or the hot plate. What has happened is that energy, it's still on that hot plate, so you're still adding energy, but that energy is now being used to change, to separate the molecules, to change states. So you know wherever you have a flat line, you have a phase change, and that means it's a change in potential energy. Notice the emphasis. Does that mean those would be good test questions? Absolutely. Okay, now let's look at, at the other three we have left. When you have a change in slope, look at what's happening you are changing temperature. When you get a change in temperature, you're getting a change in movement, which means you're getting a change in kinetic energy. So when you have just one state that's heating or cooling, that's a change in kinetic energy. So wherever you see, whoops, let's go back. This one should have also had one. That whenever you have a change in state, it's a change in kinetic. And it will be easier to understand and remember, if you remember kinetic means movement, look at what's moving. The temperature's moving. So when the temperature's moving, that's a change in kinetic. When the temperature stays the same, you cannot use, um, excuse me, you do not have any change in the movement of the temperature. So kinetic stays the same and you're getting potential energy. Okay, when we start doing some calculations, because yes, there's going to be math with this whole graph, because different things are happening, we will be using different formulas. So when you have a phase change, we will be looking at using just the Q. It's just however grams or moles times that heat, either the heat of vaporization or the heat of fusion. Wherever you see a change in temperature, it's like, oh yeah, I have a formula that has evolved a change in temperature. MC delta T then is going to be used whenever you see a change in temperature. So what that means is you just might have to do more than one calculations. So after we kind of look at the theory of it, we will be putting the math to this. So a couple other things just kind of add what you can see. 
these are other examples of types of questions I can ask you. So for instance, where does the melting point begin? So you have to think to yourself, okay, what's melting? Melting is going from a solid to a liquid. So therefore, that's happening at point C. Okay, we can read these graphs forward, but we can also read them backwards. So you know the same thing, read it backwards. And so what you know is when you're going backwards, what's the opposite? So this way is vaporization. Go the opposite way, that's condensation. This is why they happen at the same temperature. You go this direction, it's freezing. The opposite direction is melting. So look at where's condensation. Condensation is where the point that gas starts to become a liquid. So on your chart, gas starts to become a liquid right here at point F. Okay, from point D to C, heat is released. How do I know that? Okay, this is again. So look at this, what are we doing? As you go this way, you're adding energy, so as you read it, left to right, you just know all those processes are endothermic. Melting, you need to add heat, it's endothermic. Vaporization, you need to add heat. To, if you want to boil water, you have to add heat. That's endothermic. So that means when you read it opposite, everything is exothermic. So in other words, condensation is exothermic. That's why steam can burn you. Melt, um, excuse me, freezing. Did I just say these backwards? Wow. Sorry, I'm making this like at 5.30 in the morning. Hopefully you caught that. Okay, if I said this backwards, I apologize. Melting is endothermic when you're going through. Freezing is exothermic. Freezing is going from a liquid to a solid. Melting is going from a solid to a liquid. Hopefully you all caught that and you know better and you knew what I was doing. I was just testing you. So freezing is exothermic. Okay, condensation is exothermic, melting is endothermic, vaporization, boiling, evaporization is endothermic. If you have to put it on, it's kind of ask yourself, do I have to put it on the stove? If you have to put it on the stove for that to happen, that means you're going to have to add the heat, it's endothermic. Okay, what type of energy is involved during a phase change? We just went over that. You know it's potential energy. So from this diagram, you need to be able to read it. Okay, I will not have solid, solid, liquid, 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 gas, and gas written it on for you. You need to know those states. But again, let's let your common sense take over. You know this is temperature. So at a lower temperature, you're going to have the solids at the higher temperature. Okay, last thing these can tell you. If I told you this was water, this temperature right here, this is look at what it's doing. It's going from a liquid to a gas. This is its boiling point. If this is water, you know it's 100 degrees. So A then is the melting point or freezing point. Again, if we know it's water, it's zero degrees. So if you ever see a substance, and this happens, let's say, at 110 or 90 or 80, you know that it's not water. So we can also use it to identify a substance when we know it's boiling point or the melting points, because those, again, are intensive properties and do not change. We will see you in our next class. Thank you.